This is Brad Nine, and we are Tormenta Strong. This is Miguel Lopez, and we are Tormenta FC Strong. Hey, everybody. I wanted to let you in on what we're doing during this coronavirus, where we have to be away from the fields and away from the kids. And I wanted to do some of that with some storytelling. I think one of my one of the best ways we can tell stories is through interview processes and letting everybody know what our coaches are up to uh, during this time. So I wanted to start off with one of my favorite coaches, one of my favorite people, Miguel Lopez, uh, director of Hilton Head Academy, fantastic person, fantastic coach, fantastic mentor. He, I've known him over 10 years now. I knew him when he was a first year coach. I knew I helped him along in his in his journey. He's helped along so many other coaches now and helped along so many other players. And I have the greatest respect for the guy. And I wanted to bring him in and have a little chat with him now and uh, connect further with Coach Miguel here. Coach Miguel, can you tell us a little bit about you? Yeah, um, so my name is Miguel. I've been with Tormenta almost since we started. I've been here for about 10 years now. And I've been running and I've been running and working with the Hilton Head part of the club for for almost all 10 years, doing some select stuff here and there and going to Savannah and Hardyville my my fair fair um, fair amount of times. But um but yeah, I've been I've been coaching here for 10 years. I just started coaching at Hilton Head Island High School as well. And uh, I'm just, um, I'm addicted to the game. I'm addicted to making kids better. And um, I'm excited for what this journey has in store for me as I keep going. Thank you, Miguel. I, I would love to hear about your origin story, where this whole thing started, how you became passionate about soccer. I, I love origin stories and, and getting behind the scenes of how you got into this role and how it all happened and you know start as young as you can with some of your first soccer thoughts and ideas yeah well um when i uh when i got really really into soccer in my uh my high school years um and when i graduated high school i was just disappointed that i didn't work hard to to try to get and re get recruited by a college and i didn't i didn't really have any plans for for soccer anymore other than playing like in a local adult league or something like that so oh oh miguel hold on there hold on there so so when you were you went to hilton head high right yeah now when you were at hilton head high you got to give a shout out to your old coach and talk about what position you played were you a captain what kind of role you had in that whole setup yeah um so my coach was wayne quinlan he was a great coach that uh i mean just just taught me a lot and really helped me become an adult during during my high school years and uh, my senior year I was able to be captain and uh, I was a big I was a really big important player for the team my senior year and so playing center back talking to the whole team being the leader out there was a was a really big important part of my my senior year playing soccer so, so and, that that really clued you in there a little bit and then yeah. you were able to you then went on to went on to college. Uh, tell us a little bit about you know freshman year. I think uh, I think Coach Jeremy found you somewhere, yeah. Hilton Head, and kind of there, there's a there's a big story behind that a little bit. Yeah. So um, I ap after my high school year, I still trained all summer. I even went to camps after my senior year of high school just because I wanted to keep training and getting better, even though I had no no really big college motives to go play in college. But one day I was just training on my own on Hilton Head, right by where, um, by the basketball courts in the rec center where we do winter training and summer training. And Jeremy walked by and, and saw me just training on my own one cold, one cold December, December night. And uh, just kind of pulled me over and asked me if I was ever interested in maybe coaching soccer and giving back to the game. And I, I said yes in a heartbeat. And he gave me his number and ever since then, uh, we just started coaching. This was in 2000, in December 2010, when I met Jeremy and uh, started to get involved. So, and and then some of my favorite things. I mean, your dedication levels are ridiculous. Because when you know Ben or Jeremy or I would coach older teams, 
we looked down the bench and I know you had already coached two teams at two games that day. And then Miguel will be on our bench watching us coach. And then Miguel would drive over to Savannah to, to run sweet feet sessions. You, you were uh, all, all encompassed by the game and trying yeah. to figure out how to get better. Like, just, just talk to me about, you know, where that came from, like that work ethic. How did, how did it develop in you? Uh, and then how do, you, how do you try to get that across to your players nowadays? Yeah. I mean, I remember my, my first season on, on Hilton Head, we had two teams and I was just, uh, I, I don't know what it was, but I, I just fell in love with, with just with, with these kids, like with, within like a month, just, I was like, if you look in the back of all my college notebooks, I have a bunch of sessions and lineups and ideas and how to make the kids better. And sometimes, honestly, I would leave class like five, six minutes early, just so, just so I get to the field a little bit earlier to set up. and. And I just, I just fell so in love with coaching and, and training the kids and going to their games on the weekend. And, and at this point, I was just an assistant coach. So I, I was just helping out. And uh, I, just, I just fell in love with it. And I, just, I wanted to learn as, as much as I could, as quickly as I could. Um, and so I, I started coaching uh, in the spring of 2011. And then that summer, I went and took my first coaching course. And then after that, I just took a coaching course every winter and every summer for like the next six years, hitting coaching courses. Uh, so was- amazing stuff. So you, you found a lot of value in that, it sounds like, and uh, you know, a lot of value being on the field around, you know, people that have done it before and then stealing this, stealing that, making it your own. Has that kind of been your process there? Yeah. Yeah, just, uh, just watching you do sessions, watching Jeremy do sessions, Ben, and I mean, when I first started coaching, like Jeremy Weeks, there was this guy Martin that was with us. Like, I mean, I j- just just watching all these sessions going on the computer, and then just tweaking up my own little sessions because after the first season, uh, the guy that was my that was that I was assisting left, and so after the first season, I was I was on my own coaching. You were the team. guy. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, it was exciting. In the in the fall of 2011, I was already coaching my own teams and. How old, how old were you when you were doing that? I was 19. 19 I'm, I'm amazing stuff. I mean, <laughs> I, I, it, just, it just goes to tell that when you put trust in a coach and you let them kind of, you give them some advice and you let them run with it a little bit, uh, you know, and helping you out along the way, what this turns into is an amazing piece. Uh, how old are you now? 28 now. So you're you're an old timer in the game now. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and then so take us from like you know you have this role where you're coaching teams, and then all of a sudden you're the Hilton head director. Like I, I know that didn't happen overnight, and I know there's some learning curve behind it all. And now you manage 150 kids and 10 to 15 teams every season. <laughs> How did all that come about from this two team um, journey? So when, when I first started coaching, the director on Hilton Head was a, was an awesome friend of mine named Dan Waymont. And he really helped me fall in love with the game even more. Um, I, what I loved about him the most was every time I had a, an, an idea, whether it was a bad or a good one, he would let me roll with it. I would ask him like, hey, Dan, I think I have the session for today. Would you mind if I set it up? And, and he was always like, yeah, man, go for it. So he was just he was just always so cool and lenient about me being able to try and, and just go for it. He just, uh, um, I remember going to Savannah one time and uh, th- there was 40 kids in the group that I was at. And then Jeremy just would, had his own group and he, he told me and you, he's like, hey, let me go run the session. And I had all these 97 girls and <laughs> 96, like it was just, I mean, just getting thrown in the deep end and then just having guys like yourself letting me just, just roll with it and try out new things. I mean, that's what made me fall in love with it. Just, just even more. Yep. So. And, and then, so, so what's the last, uh, you know, let's say the last five years, what does that look like for you? Um, last five years have been, uh, I've been really busy just just coaching as, as much as I can, as many teams as I can possibly schedule on my plate, just so I could, uh, because it's really important for me that, that, I, that I come in close contact with all, the, all my teams. And even teams that aren't even under my wing sometimes, 
co covering some Savannah teams, covering some select teams. I mean, just uh, being able to have the knowledge on how to coach U6 all the way to U U18 has been has been great. Just getting thrown in the deep end and having to cover here and learn these guys' names and it's just been awesome being able to work with all these different level teams and being able to have an, make an impact with all these different teams and just get to know all these different families and just continue to make connections with, with everybody is, I think, is a, is a big factor on why I've, uh, I've had so much um, success. All these families, just they, they, uh, I just create, create good relationships with them. And then just me, whether I sh I'll randomly show up to cover a team and parents didn't even know, and it's always a good time. And just, I just love it. And now you're uh, coaching Hilton Head High. Yeah. Your coach, like how, how's, how's that been different? Um, it's great because it's my first time coaching like uh, 18, 17 and 16 year olds all on one team and being able to uh, really use the art of coaching in this, uh, in this scenario because you, you, I have to watch video and just plan for the next game and all my, all my opponents play different. So it's nice to, it's nice to research and really read and understand a game and analyze a team and being able to, to counter how they're playing or uh, their formation. So it's just been it just the, the most fun part is just the art of being able to move all my players around and then also teach these guys how to, what it is to be on a team and what it is to be in a little family and just uh, teaching these guys how to have each other's backs and go to team dinners and just, uh, just create a nice little bond, a little family. So with 20 years from now, these guys can remember this, uh, this high school season with me. I hope I uh, made an impact with them in this short season that we had. It's gotta be nice since you're a Hilton Head alumni too. Oh yeah, especially since being able to play there and seeing some of my old teachers, uh, <laughs> it's funny. And it's, uh, it's great every time I walk in those hallways, I just have a, a, just such a great feeling to be there. Yeah, that's that's just so amazing. Over all these years, so you've been around the game for so long. You've been working with parents and families and kids, and brothers and sisters, and you got to have a cool story about something that is is memorable to, memorable to you um, as a coach. You know, something that is uh, could be intriguing to. You, you, not even along your journey, but something that is just memorable to you and, and what you did during this time. Do, do you have one of those? I have um I have four really good memories from when I started. Uh, love it, Miguel. And then, um, so my, my my first one is going to be uh is going to be at the end of 2011 when uh Jeremy uh, who was my former boss he uh he let me take a team to Atlanta. It was the 01 girls. And he trusted me. It was my first. It was my first big drive on my own, all the way to Atlanta with the team. And Jeremy had faith in me that I was going to do well. And uh, I made it all the way to the finals. And it was. It was. It, I'll never forget just beating all these really strong, tough teams. And um, and with my 01 girls, and that was my first team I ever coached. So we just have a really strong bond. And uh, so that was one of my great memories. My uh, and my second great memory was uh, coaching the 03 Boys Black and winning the U.S. Club Regional Tournament oh, for the awesome. whole week long. <laughs> and uh, awesome. that was a really awesome event. Just um, maybe I was just coaching two, three years in coaching. I was sent all the way to Greensboro by myself with these 03 Boys Black who I hadn't coached, really. And um, I was able to, to learn and put the pieces together and we pulled off some astonishing wins. And that, uh, now we got two of those boys on the Tormenta FC right. League One team, huh? With uh, Grant yeah. Hampton and Stephen O'Hearn. That's right. Yeah, and that's um, great players, great boys. Um, my third, my third big memorable experience was uh, I took. They were our O2 girls black back when they were still playing six v six, maybe like seven, eight years ago. We went to a tournament in Greenville with no subs, and we won it all. And uh, just great memories. All the parents always uh, just always remember that that weekend, how it was just we had no subs. It was just a crazy weekend. We had some crazy wins. Well, and, well, what, did, what did you learn from that with not having any subs? Like, how, how, how did you get that done over? I'm guessing you played four games that weekend. Yeah, playing four games that weekend. Um, 
no subs. I just, I just had to learn how to how to rest the players on the field by moving them in positions and shifting some of them from goalkeeper to on the field. And then um, we just focused a lot on just trying to keep the ball as much as we could because we know we couldn't be chasing a lot the entire game. So we did a really good job just keeping possession of the ball and um, just me being able to, I think, I think just the bond that I had with the girls, the, the girls just wanted to play so much harder for me. And, and they seem to have a real, I think they still talk about it. Yeah. Because <laughs> I, I, I've trained some of them in the January, February time time frame, and yeah. like they always go back to that story as their yeah. number one. <laughs> yeah. And, and my last most recent memory that I had was um, probably about five, six years ago, I went to the Castle Tournament with the 01 girls. It was probably one of my last tournaments with them until I moved, until they got moved up to, to be coached by, by Jeremy. But I was able to go to Castle with the 01 girls and win an 11 v 11 event. It was my first wow. 11 v 11 event and I was able to win it with the 01 girls. And it was just a really big tournament. We were all the way in Raleigh. It was just th th that five hour drive home was probably the, the best five hour drive of just being able to sit and look at the trophy and then just <laughs> all the memories of all the crazy goals that we scored in that tournament. And then just um, one of my last big events with those with those girls. And all those girls are are going to college. Like they're going to Furman and Vanderbilt. I mean, they, they're going to all these big schools and just I just couldn't be more proud of them. It's crazy. Like your, your impact has been, I, I mean, I, I don't think these players get to the spots that they're getting to without you uh, mentoring and helping them along the way. Uh, and it's it's just been a, and it, you can still see players nowadays that are working with you, Coach Miguel, that are eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, that in eight years, they're still you're still gonna be their favorite coach because of, of the effort and the hard work and the organization and the professionalism you put into play now. It's, it's really amazing to watch. Uh, and it was why you were pretty much my first hire coming coming in when we rebranded Tormenta. Because uh, I, I know I needed you on the island around as many kids as possible to make it, to continue the success. Uh, and I, 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 I just commend you so much on what you've done um, over the last 10 years. Thanks, man. Yeah, man. Thanks a lot. We're, we're in this crazy coronavirus time Never seen anything like it uh, in my life, uh, where we have to take all this time away from what we're doing, not only on the field, but just in everything, in school and um, just all aspects of life. Um, what kind of tips do you got for the kids out there now that you know are just searching for some type of normalcy? You know, let alone having to do school online, but then having to do soccer online. And now you're living in, now you're under the same roof for 24 hours a day with the same people and you're going a little nutty. Like, how, how do we get through this, Coach Miguel? Um, one of the biggest things that I, I, I've, I've been doing is um, I've been trying to stick to a routine every single day. Well, well, five days out of the week, I, I try to stick to, to my standard routine, which is um, like, I wake up early in the morning and I do a little bit of meditating. I, I do a little bit of reading. I then I get on my on my computer, and then I'm, I I knock out some of my work. So for like for the younger players or all the younger kids, um, just just sticking to a routine, just trying to knock out your schoolwork early, right? That way you have the rest of the afternoon off. And then um, just I've been watching a lot of videos and just trying to learn from other people that there's plenty of online sessions or online activities. There's plenty of coaches out there doing like challenges of the week or challenges of the day. So I think just sticking to a routine, like not waking up at noon or 11 o'clock in the morning, like not, not sleeping in too much, just sticking to, to a routine every single day or f five days out of the week has been really helping me uh, just feel like I get the most out of my day. And I, and I feel, and just sticking to my, my routine is making things go a little bit more normal for me. Right, right. Uh, I'm still working. I'm still working out. I'm still like, I'm getting my meditating in. I'm, I'm still walking. I'm still exercising. Right. So just sticking sticking to a routine is, is just really important. So, um, so for a player, just knocking out that schoolwork early, then having a video session ready to, to uh, or some, some kind of 
footwork that you want to do, go outside, you can go on a, on a parking lot and your driveway and your backyard. Like you don't need a whole lot of space. Go out there and get a little workout in and then just, just trying to eat healthy as, as best you can. And uh, yeah, just sticking to a routine has been really important. I think that's an amazing uh, concept and idea. And, you know, even in our normal life, that's hard to do sometimes. Yeah. Um, but, but you know, how, how do you organize that? Do you sit down and organize that the night before? Or do yeah. you kind of so, so set the up night a whole before, week on a Sunday? Or what do you do? Um, I, I just, like right now with this whole, uh, since we've taken a break from the virus, these these uh, last four couple weeks, I've been I've been doing it day by day. I just, I just, um, I usually do it for the week, but right now lately I've been doing day by day. So that the night before, I just plan out my workout, my session, my individual sessions that I'm doing still and um, stuff like that. So just planning it the night before, that way the next day when I wake up, I'm already ready. I have my schedule set and I'm just ready to take the day. So um, it's been really good. And just spending a lot of time with your family and just, uh, just talking and just, I've been having a little bit more cookouts than usual. Uh, just me and my girlfriend, or like my cousin next door neighbor, Mike uh, comes over, and just uh, just trying to be happy and optimistic in these situations is uh, is really important, I think, too. So awesome ideas, man! I wanted to also have you as you know in your leadership role, uh, give a little bit back to other leaders. Um, and the way one of the things I, I love about what you do are the the positive personal relationships you create not only with kids, but with families and extended families. And uh, you just seem to know either what to write on an email, what to say on a phone call, or what to say in person that brings people in closer uh, to the Tormenta FC Academy family. Um, do you have a tip or two that you can let other leaders know? Because everything we do now is uh, so relationship-based. Like, how, how did... Uh, I mean, what's your, um, you know, what do you do to make to do that so well? So um, I've been, um, I've been, uh, I've been reading in these last couple years as, as well, which um, I, I hope a lot of people in my twenties are are doing because I just think it's so important. Like even you, Brad, you, you're one of my biggest people to just tell me to read and read and just just learn and just try to try to exercise that brain as, as much as you you can and during all my readings and watching videos and just trying to learn um, my, my, my two foundations are kindness and empathy is kind of what I've been what I've been living by and how I've been trying to go about my, my demeanor my personality and how I try to act is because I, I know kindness is, is, is always going to win um, it doesn't matter in what standpoint or what situation that you're in or or whether I'm coaching a game or I'm having a like a, like a tough tough phone call with a parent or I have to write a tough email or, or um, like I just want a tournament like I, I just always I try to live by those two things like just trying to be kind because I, I just you just never know what somebody else has been through or what what's going on at home or like I just know that kindness is always going to win because if I continue to be kind and continue to be nice to people and continue to give good feedback and just give a lot of positivity like that's going to continue to rub off on other people and more people and more people I'm, I, it's, it's a chain effect and then um, just learning how to be empathetic has been a, a big a big part of my uh, my thought process just just uh, putting myself in other people's shoes and seeing how they feel about certain situations and because I know in this job sometimes we have to do some some tough we have to make some tough decisions and just just knowing that I come from an from an empathetic standpoint and that kindness for me is always going to be number one like I just uh when I talk to people, when I talk to my players, when I talk to my parents, like I just, those are the two things that I've been trying to live by lately, is just kindness and empathy. Uh, amazing stuff, Miguel. And uh, as, as far as the kindness piece, um, you know, sometimes you have to, you know, show that to referees, to your players, to your the fans, um, to other people you work with, uh, it, it's it's so important in order to you know in order for us all to have success in what we're doing. And you're so right that it rubs off on what other people 
do. And I, I, I've seen that firsthand with players that are that we started with in 2010 when they were eight, nine, and ten, and now they're 17 and 18 years old. And some of them are the and where they might not have been the kindest person, or uh, they might have done some things on the field that, as a coach, you're like, "What are you doing? Like this makes no sense." Uh, whereas now there are top leaders in the club. They have a great understanding. They're kind to others. They help others out throughout the entire way. It's just this uh, long-term process where, where, where it's you're, you're you're chasing this long goal that you don't even know if they'll get to it. You hope they'll get to it, and they'll stay with it for so long. But it's turned them into such a you know a quality person as they're graduating from our program. Uh, and, and and the more people you can have around it with that kindness goal, I think. It's uh, the more, you know, positive leaders we turn out of Tormenta FC Academy. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, man, it's it's been awesome talking to you, and I, I know you got some some fantastic goals. Uh, you know, over for over the next one, three, five, ten years, what you want to be doing with your life, uh, what other leadership roles you want to get into. Uh, as a sign-off, can you uh, fill us in on w what your future goals are? Well, um, some of my um, more short-term goals, maybe in the next one or two years, is I, I, I really want to continue to coach 11v11 uh, 11 11 at, uh, at higher levels. I want to try to get into that U, uh, U15, 16, 17 age group with, uh, with boys or girls at, at some point. But I, I feel like I, uh, getting into the high school season was something that was going to prepare me and help me get better at that. So... Um, Looking forward to doing that in the next couple of years, just coaching at higher levels, really getting getting me thinking a little bit more and stretching me and getting, getting me out of my comfort zone. Um, another thing uh, I plan to do hopefully in the fall is I plan to start my master's with the Ohio University in, um, in soccer coaching. Um, it's a great online program uh, that I've been uh, I've been reading about and I just keep putting off, but um, I know it's something that uh, that's in my future here in the next in the next. Uh, couple months or hopefully at least in the next year um, and the last thing is uh, I really want to try to go overseas and go get a license um, I know the UFB is a uh, is, is something that I'm able to get because I have my C license here in the States so just going just getting out of my comfort zone I, I've, I've learned that in the last uh, last half uh, half a year or so is um, if I want to continue to get better if I want to continue to improve as a coach I, I need to get out of my comfort zone I need to I need to get stretched a little bit more and um, do things that I'm not that good at uh, so I can continue to get better. So taking this high school job and coaching 11 v 11 and forming a team and a bond and a little family is, uh, is something that I'm, that I'm not that good at yet, but I know, I know I'm going to be good at. And so coaching high school is something that's been stretching me and um, I've, I've learned a lot in these, uh, these last couple weeks and two, three months that I've been coaching high school. And so, I'm just looking for ways to continue to better myself and stretch myself. That's that's what we have to do. We have to continue to 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 get out of our comfort zone. So those are my projections for the next three, uh, three, five, ten years. Well, love it, love it, Miguel. I think you're living it every day, and you're, you're getting better every day, and getting everybody around you better every single day. Uh, any last last thoughts you want to leave us with? Um, I just want to tell my Tormenta family to continue to be be strong, be, be optimistic, um, make sure our, our players are, are out there staying, staying active more than anything, running, just getting a little sweat in, not, not being inside the house the entire time, just and uh, just being optimistic and spending some good family time. And I, I really hope to see you all guys on the field pretty soon. Uh, thanks so much, Miguel. Uh, fantastic interview. Um, families, I appreciate you you know, taking this story time in. We want to give you a deeper dive into some of our coaches and what we're trying to do here at Tormenta FC Academy with your families and what, why you're still so important to us in everything that we do and how we can't wait to get back on the field. Uh, signing out here, Brad Nine, Director of Soccer Operations for, for the Academy, and we, we look forward to seeing you on the field as soon as possible. Uh, everyone stay Tormenta strong, and I look forward to, to seeing you soon. Thanks again, Miguel. Yep, thanks.